Anji, should we start? Yep, go ahead. Shekhar. So, good afternoon, everybody. I welcome you all to our beautiful campus of CSIR Tech, which is situated in city beautiful Chandigarh. So I, on behalf of CSIR Tech, Action Day, warm welcome to all participants, speakers who have joined us for this curtain raiser ceremony, which we have organized to disseminate information about India International Science Festival 2020, which will be held in December 22nd to 25th, December 2020 on virtual mode. So, this, uh, you know, IISF was started uh, by Ministry of Science and Technology from 2015 onward. And this is the sixth edition. And uh, we are, you know, today we have uh, invited our I mean, three speakers from outside, which will, who will be sharing their experiences. You know, because the theme of this uh, year's IISF is Science for Atam Nirbhar Bharat and Global Welfare. So all our speakers, they have they are following Atam Nirbhar only. So uh, I would like to, uh, first I will, uh, to begin with, I will invite our director, Dr. Sanjeev Khosla, to welcome, officially welcome our guests and participants. Dr. Khosla, please. Thanks, Neeraj. Um, welcome everyone to this event uh, uh, where we are uh, initiating the process of uh, the sixth edition of uh, India International Science Festival. Uh, this is the sixth one. Uh, it has been held uh, in various places around India, um, but this is the first time where when it's being held virtually. So um, it's a new experience, and uh, we I would like to uh, invite all and everyone. Uh, to uh, this event, which starts from 22nd of December. Um, it would be a nice experience. One of the main reasons why this idea was mooted at the, in the first place is because uh, a society that actually believes in scientific thinking and scientific way of life does much, much better than uh, other societies and uh, India has imbibed this philosophy and we would like to uh, uh, make sure that an, an institute like ours uh, promote this uh, to uh, to and uh, take it to the general society as much as possible uh, i would like to welcome the two guests today and also the guests uh, on uh, 30th who are going to uh, deliver their lectures um, uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation and uh, coming to this event and uh, shedding light on uh, the areas of your work. Um, I would also like to thank uh, the MTech team who has actually made this possible, uh, particularly Neeraj, Anshu uh, and uh, Chandrasekhar. Um, I would also like to thank other members of the uh, team uh, who have made this possible. Uh, and without taking more of your time, I would uh, give it back to uh, Neeraj uh, to start the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Amit sir, for your motivation. So now, since we are uh, disseminating the information about uh, India's International Science Festival. So, you know, we have a small video for you. 
so i would request everybody to watch the video and uh, try to register for this event which will be held in december भारतीय विज्ञान के इतिहास और नवीन वैज्ञानिक उपलब्धियों को जन जन तक पहुंचाने के लिए एक महोत्सव की परिकल्पना की गई। विज्ञान भारती यानी विभाग की इस सोच को साकार रूप देने के लिए ही साल 2015 में भारतीय अंतर्राष्ट्रीय विज्ञान महोत्सव की शुरुआत हुई और इसी परंपरा को निभाते हुए इस बार भी छठे आई का आयोजन बाईस ऐसी पच्चीस दिसम्बर को आयोजित किया जा रहा है लेकिन कोविड के चलते इस बार का आईआईएसएफ वर्चुअल माध्यम से होगा हमारा तो प्रयास है कि लाखों से लोगों को इसमें जुड़ा पाए क्योंकि ये हमारा अवसर होता है जिस वक्त हम हमारे प्रयोगशाला में जो विज्ञान होता है वो लोगों तक उसका उसके उसे पहुंचा पाए क्या होता है कि काफी लोगों में ये रुचि रहती है कि वैज्ञानिक चार दीवारों के पीछे में क्या करते हैं किस तरह के एक्सपीरियंस करते हैं उसे क्या निष्कर्ष होता है उसे समाज को क्या फायदा होता है तो ऐसे सवालों का जो जवाब है वो आसान नहीं होता है क्योंकि विज्ञान को बहुत सरल भाषा में लोगों तक पहुंचाना ये बहुत कठिन काम है और इसलिए आई जैसे जो फेस्टिवल्स है उनका मकसद यही होता है कि हम लोगों तक हमारा जो एक्साइटमेंट है वो ले जा पाए इस बार आत्मनिर्भर भारत एवं विश्व कल्याण के लिए विज्ञान के शीर्षक के तहत विज्ञान से जुड़े इकतालीस विभिन्न विषयों को शामिल किया जाएगा जिनमें इस बार भारतीय विज्ञान का इतिहास दर्शन और विज्ञान एग्रीटेक स्वच्छ वायु ऊर्जा अपशिष्ट और स्वच्छता जैव विविधता और विज्ञान कूटनीति जैसे प्रासंगिक विषयों को जोड़ा गया है खास बात है कि भारत सरकार के विज्ञान और प्रौद्योगिकी तथा पृथ्वी विज्ञान मंत्रालय के साथ अब आईआईएसएफ में स्वास्थ्य एवं परिवार कल्याण मंत्रालय सहित इसरो परमाणु ऊर्जा विभाग और विज्ञान एवं प्रौद्योगिकी से संबंधित अन्य संस्थान में सहभागी बन चुके हैं भारतीय अंतर्राष्ट्रीय विज्ञान महोत्सव अपने हर एडिशन के साथ ज्यादा ऐसी ज्यादा लोगो को जोड़ने में सफल रहा है इसी को देखते हुए इस बार भी उम्मीद जताई जा रही है कि आईआईएसएफ 2020 डिजिटल तरीके से पहले से भी ज्यादा लोगों तक पहुंचेगा। नाउ आई थिंक आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट डॉक्टर अंशु टू प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर राम जी Yeah, thank you, Neeraj. Uh, I hope I'm audible, and it's a pleasure to introduce Dr. Ramji Palela, who is currently the CEO of the Atal Incubation Center at the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, Hyderabad. Uh, Dr. Ramji is a seasoned mentor and an enabler in the life sciences innovation ecosystem. He did his PhD from IIT Hyderabad, and then has several uh, degrees to his credit, in, including a postdoc. He then did his degrees in IPR and MBA. Uh, he is currently the is established under the Niti uh, Ayog Government of India. Uh, previous to this, uh, Ramji was the Chief Manager, uh, Grants Management Division at IKP Knowledge Park, Hyderabad, and worked closely with the very famous biotechnology ignition grant. All of us know that as BEG and with Bayrak. And besides that, uh, he has uh, been managing various international and national grants. that support biotechnology and r&d startups as well as academicians and individuals uh, we are very happy uh, dr palela that you have uh, agreed to be a part of this event uh, for the curtain raiser and we would like to hear from you uh, your uh, opinion and your ideas on 
the self-reliant, the science for self-reliant India and global welfare. With that brief introduction, I would like to welcome you and maybe I can uh, share your slides so that we can uh, go ahead. Please, uh, thank you, uh, Anju, for uh, a great introduction and uh, good evening and uh, uh, good evening to all of the participants and the pro especially uh, Dr. Sanjeev Koshla, uh, where uh, I couldn't beat you, but uh, yes, this is a fantastic uh, start from the Imtech side and your team could able to actually start this kind of uh, outreaching event where many of the people, including students especially, they'll be joining this event so that they can be part of the uh, mega event in the December. Uh, so, you know, I, 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 just, I just want to focus majorly about the student innovation in India. If you can see past five to seven years, uh, you know, a lot of changes, uh, especially, you know, student focused uh, programs. Of course, we have PhD postdoc level fellowship programs uh, to actually get the best, uh, you know, uh, scientists back to India uh, so that we, they can actually serve our nation with uh, several invention and innovation based, uh, you know, research. So. In that context, um, I'd like to say, I'd like to mention and stress much on to the student innovation programs that uh, uh, Government of India has introduced. And, uh, you know, even uh, Prime Minister uh, um, uh, Narendra Modi ji mentioned several other, uh, you know, I mean, brought many other initiatives where, you know, we have to stand on our feet and uh, join our hands to collaborate each other so that we can actually um, <clears throat> you know, uh, see the self-reliance uh, of India where we actually um, help the global uh, uh, situation, global economy so that you know, we can actually take care of the global welfare initiatives in the planet. So in that uh, uh, context uh, today, quickly to um, you know, address on this specific programs and uh, uh, what are the students even uh, initiatives that are in India briefly I'll be mentioning uh, I'm sorry I may not be covering many of the topics uh, I mean many of the programs in this particular theme but yes uh, the point is that uh, today we have fantastic pro I mean platforms uh, for students uh, be it CSIR, GBT, DST and the many other ministries you know even um, one best example before I actually go to my slides uh, to say that, you know, the COVID pandemic actually opened our eyes to actually uh, work on a war foot um, where all the ministries actually uh, synergistically worked uh, to help each other how to actually combat COVID. And it, it actually helped us actually how we can actually strategize our R&D as well as, you know, uh, translation of research activities. I think uh, with that, I think this IASF uh, will be you know, a great platform to many of the students to actually consider uh, this journey of you know, innovation, invention and innovation so that we can actually be uh, self-reliance. Can you please go to the next slide, uh, Pranshu? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I just mentioned to you already, you know, how we can actually stand um, on our own feet so that we can actually um, touch upon every societal uh, factors and segments so that we can actually touch upon all the sectors, be it a primary, secondary or tertiary, so that we can actually use our resources more efficiently for the betterment of the nation. Next slide, please. Um, Hello, Rakhi. Can you see the next slide? No, I, I think it's a kind of lag out there, but it's okay. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm talking about a particular age groups uh, in the nation where you know the 25 um, <clears throat> years age group and 35 years age group because I think that is the only age group that can actually solve their own problems and uh, the children's problems or elderly people's problems. I think these, this group is actually highly aggressive in the sense you just actually can motivate or just uh, tell about some platform. They actually do the things just like that. Even uh, 
uh, if you can see the percentages, they are pretty interesting. But at the same time, uh, what I uh, saw in the past two to three years, even uh, 15 to 19 or 20 years age group, uh, they are brilliant. With the initiatives of Niti Aayog, um, like AIM, Atal Innovation Mission, the ATLs that we have in the country, uh, several innovative products came from these uh, very brilliant school students even. So I think these are the groups really, you know, helping our nation. Actually, another five, 10 years or 20 years, I think India will be, you know, um, touching upon all the sectors and it will be leader in each and every sector. Already, we are in a, such a position, uh, top, uh, uh, you know, um, position when compared with other developing countries as well as uh, developed countries as well in different sectors. So STEM, if you can consider uh, gender equality and many other, um, you know, uh, aspects are well considered by the government. And uh, we have to actually encourage these young groups to actually converge into these uh, particular research activities so that, you know, they can actually brought uh, they can actually bring a lot of uh, products in this line. So uh, this will not only improve the opportunities, but also improve the quality of life significantly. I mean, today you do for your local development or local initiatives, but again, nationally, you are contributing and this will actually reflect the global economy. Next slide, please. Uh, so, um, I, I couldn't see the slide, but yeah, uh, starting from the school students and uh, even to the PhDs, postdocs and uh, other freelance innovators who would like to come back to the innovation platforms, I think, you know, uh, several other uh, programs have been designed by the government of India. So, ATL is the best example. Why I'm telling and stressing upon this particular group is that uh, we actually part of uh, uh, this uh, particular program called uh, Student Innovation Program 2.0 and uh, 3.0 that we, we are part of. And out of the seven groups that we coached, two of them, sorry, four of them actually gone to the top 25 in the nation. And actually two of them gone to Russia last year and presented their uh, brilliant products to the president of Russia. So after the school students, I think, you know, it's a policy Indian, uh, uh, you know, science and technology innovation policy also focusing on how we, we can actually bridge between these particular groups of uh, school students and uh, undergraduates, graduates and postgraduates so that these can actually effectively be tuned up towards innovation and uh, entrepreneurship. So considering those particular, uh, you know, uh, streams of uh, education, so Sitare program of BIRAC, and uh, GYTI and the other innovation fellowship program of BIRAC and uh, different entrepreneurship and residence programs, several other initiatives have been designed. They can actually use even at the last year of their undergraduation or graduation or post-graduation, they can actually attempt these small grants of 1 lakh, 5 lakhs, 10 or 15 lakhs of grants and even 50 lakhs of grants uh, through various programs and initiatives by NSTADB or BIRAC or TDB or even uh, uh, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Mighty Startup Hub. So these initiatives have been actually uh, put in front of uh, different student groups and various colleges. We actually reach out to at least, uh, uh, you know, a few hundreds of uh, uh, college groups and the universities uh, yearly, uh, either virtually or physically, so that, you know, they can... Uh, get aware of these particular programs to apply and they can actually um, develop their ideas. They can actually validate their ideas and develop their products or processes. So I think considering these various, uh, uh, you know, PhD opportunities, you know, PhD, PhD fellows, they may say that, you know, whether they have to go, uh, go to abroad or maybe looking for opportunities in India, uh, for example, fast track, fellowship programs or assistant professor jobs or any other faculty options in colleges and universities. There is also a kind of uh, uh, program, university innovation clusters have been uh, formed by BIRAC 
to actually motivate those particular PhDs to use that fellowship to actually translate lab-based technologies into products. So those UIC fellows can actually apply for, again, BIRAC and other government grants, so or non-government grants as well. So what not? A lot of other platforms that we are having today, even uh, recent initiative, fantastic fellowship program of uh, uh, Professor M.K. Ban Young Research Fellowship Program, where 75,000 rupees per month for a period of, uh, I'm sorry, two to three years, I guess, and uh, kind of uh, research grant of uh, 20 lakhs as well. So that's a brilliant program where uh, you can actually do your inventions, uh, exploratory works, then try to actually get into the translation so that you can actually develop some innovative products. So again, like, likewise, DST's Inspire Fellowships and CSR is also having a pool officers and other area of uh, opportunities, which can actually be, trans even recently CSR actually coming up with a lot of uh, incubation activities where even student uh, entrepreneurship activities, even in fact, CCMB, Atul Incubation Center, CCMB, we actually supported uh, uh, four fellows with uh, this kind of fellowship after their uh, PhD thesis submission. So the patented technologies from the scientists will be actually evaluated at the incubation center, like AIC, CCMB, and after six to eight months, we'll be further validating so that the student can actually form a company along with the scientists. So these kind of programs have been in place. So DBT, BIRAC, and ACIC, Subtle Community Innovation Centers. So these are all actually meant for, uh, you know, uh, student innovators. They can actually um, be the scientists uh, uh, who can actually develop several products. Next one, please. I, I just quickly want to mention, uh, you know, um, I think this uh, <clears throat> ISF uh, probably a lot of technologies will be showcased and uh, several uh, posters and uh, so many things may be there. And you can see some kind of groups like this. If you can see the, sorry, uh, one, one slide above. So SIP, uh, the school students, whether be it a kind of uh, uh, sensor-based gloves or, you know, um, prosthetic arms with a, uh, kind of three function, six function parameters and all. There are actually, uh, if you can see Salbots technologies, when I'm just walking to the uh, uh, veranda of uh, one of the, uh, what is that uh, college, Vienna Vigna Jyoti, some guy is walking in this prosthetic and I just asked him, what are you doing? Then he told, sir, I'm in the final year, I'm just trying to explore. So why can't you apply for the big grant? Because uh, you're actually uh, also kind of voice command, uh, voice commanding, a prosthetic device. So this is kind of uh, value addition to the prosthetic hand. So they got the big grant and they are now validating in different uh, uh, clinical uh, centers. So that is one uh, student, just a student, B.Tech student could able to form a company in the fourth year itself. And again, uh, Sal City is uh, working to, I mean, kind of opportunities uh, to the student innovators who want to work as in, in, interns in their company. So. This company is doing, uh, you know, how to actually differentiate cough so that you can understand the CO, various COPDs. So whether it is a normal cough or whether it's a kind of a, a serious situation, any other infection. So the patterns in the mobile, you will actually understand this could be 99.5% or at least uh, uh, 90 plus, I can say. And I can't say 99, but some of the, some of the patterns, they actually check the accurate uh, accuracy till 95% uh, above. So that kind of accuracy, you can say that this pattern, this cough pattern actually uh, inferring to this particular disease or infection. So similarly, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, one more company is there. Uh, they're actually trying to understand normal cough, I mean, any infection-based coughs and TB-based cough. So this kind of differentiation, but Salcity is, doing this particular exercise without any assistive device. Only mobile, uh, uh, you know, microphone itself can actually give the uh, results to you. So, I mean, these are kind of examples I'm telling how students can actually involve in this kind of brilliant products. And now Sal City is actually uh, validating in Apollo and other hospitals. Uh, probably they touched upon about 300 to 500 uh, samples already. I mean, they are reaching to close to about uh, two to 3,000 
uh, samples by this uh, era so these are some of the examples but there are so many i mean what not about uh, two to uh, two to three years of uh, uh, time like 2017 to 2020 20, lot of products actually been developed by students not only science students that in the sense uh, you know biology background or chemistry or something but if you can see the iim graduates or management graduates they actually uh, apply for different grants and actually they brought brilliant products in india with waste to value or diagnostics or any other healthcare sectors uh, you know that's what i'd like to say uh, with this uh, next slide please yeah so how to actually you know leverage all the support mechanisms i think uh, uh, social media we have several pros and cons but i think you know even myself uh, following several uh, ministries uh, in the social media be it a twitter or uh, linkedin and all so you need to understand the being a young uh, researchers and young innovators in the country uh, try to follow these groups and actually understand what kind of programs are suitable for your particular stage of idea whether it's a early stage or you're already having the mvp or a kind of proof of concept or small validations large validations or pre commercialization so each and every stage of your ideation to commercialization you have fantastic opportunities by the government of india so i think you have to leverage all these things which can actually reflect on our society how it can actually help our uh, uh, societal segments um, uh, more efficiently. And again, emphasis on improving quality of living, every sphere, inclusive growth. So, I mean, you have to identify, I mean, everybody is talking about the problem solution, I mean, solutions basically. But, you know, identifying the real uh, problems in the community or the society is very important. That's why. Uh, our programs like you know the social innovation and immersion programs you know immersion is one uh, important program uh, that we can actually consider in all uh, um, you know academic sectors uh, be it a btech or you know bsc or uh, phd whatever you need to actually have some kind of industrial immersion or clinical immersion or agriculture immersion uh, so that is very important where you can actually understand the real uh, problems at the ground level so the finally, um, uh, finally, I would like to say kind of framework to monitor progress and course correction and feedback mechanisms. Yeah, we take feedback often, but they're not so efficient. So there should be a kind of a robust feedback mechanism so that we can actually uh, reiterate our uh, plan of action and our strategies uh, for the betterment of our nation. So with that, I think uh, I'm, I'd like to actually take any questions. Uh, thanks for this opportunity, uh, Dr. Anshu and the team of uh, MTech. And uh, I, I think looking forward to that exciting uh, uh, global conference. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Palela. It was a really, uh, it was really nice listening to you. It's important for us to understand, as you rightly pointed out, the gap identification is very critical. And once you have identified the gap, as you said, the MVP, the minimal viable product, I, I think there is there has to be more awareness in terms of uh, the fact that how do you ensure that the, uh, that the idea or the prototype that you're developing really has uh, a value, you know, the, what, what is the value chain uh, downstream. Yeah, okay. And you rightly pointed out that we need a framework. Just a question from my side for now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how many of these uh, companies that you basically as startups that you host at your uh, innovation center are uh, based on AI or machine learning based solutions? Yeah, uh, at least half a dozen because we till now supported about 48 or close to 50 uh, startups as well as innovators. Out of that, we have, uh, um, hello, yeah. So we have, uh, uh, six companies, I think they are working in uh, different, you know, at least three companies directly they are trying to work on uh, genome analytics and healthcare analytics. And another three companies they are trying to work, one company is working on uh, uh, identifying uh, uh, donor and recipient based on uh, panel reactive proteins, uh, existing data, and also the clinical data that they are procuring by collaborating with different hospitals. So you can actually 
reduce the time, turnaround time, TOT, uh, to identify the donor for particular organ donation. Yeah. So, and another couple of companies are working in the IoT integrated medical devices, including, you know, uh, dialysis grade water uh, uh, producing device. That's very important because we are actually importing them uh, from different companies. So, this company just recently graduated and uh, getting a lot of orders and they went to the bigger facility, uh, kind of close to quarter million dollar uh, fund raised and uh, they are now join, uh, joining with the Nipro company, Japanese, co Japanese company, to actually uh, to distribute all these low-cost devices in India. So, like that, uh, another two more companies are working in the AML based uh, yeah, things. Oh, awesome. That's really good to yeah. know. And just one more thing, there is always this issue of challenges when it comes to scientific instrumentation or chemicals that we, yeah. even to do science, you need those things. So what kind of innovation is happening in that sphere that will make us self-reliant over the next few years? Yeah, uh, so uh, I'll tell you two to three examples, um, especially for the instrumentation, I think already <clears throat> India, uh, we got at least few hundreds of companies who are making these uh, best uh, instruments. However, you know, the best in the sense, the quality, the percentage is a bit very less actually. Uh, the bigger uh, groups of these uh, companies, um, you know, <laughs> are trying to actually meet those international standards, but uh, there are different gaps. So, uh, why I'm stressing on this point is that even Government of India along with the Gates Foundation and uh, other other agencies, they're trying to join the hands to actually make different clusters in different uh, uh, cities so that, you know, locally any of these companies who are making biological reagents or any uh, diagnostic kit components or any other uh, molecular biology reagents, etc. So, kind of optimizing and uh, quality checking, you know, that's been uh, uh, introduced recently in Bangalore and Hyderabad. I think Delhi is in process, uh, Ahmedabad and uh, other cities also, that kind of uh, cluster-based initiatives are coming up. So, I think that we, that's in place. I think uh, we got uh, that program about uh, and Gates Foundation and even find they are trying to, I mean, they actually uh, gave some funds to CCMB and EIC CCMB. So, uh, it's about two months it started. So, these companies are trying to optimize and also uh, br bringing bring a lot of uh, best quality of products so that we can actually make the things within India and uh, we have we can actually depend on those particular products without any doubt. And uh, similarly, instruments, one of our companies, they actually started a manufacturing facility. So, whatever the small instruments that we have, at least uh, more than a dozen or two dozens of them that company is making with the best uh, you know performance and that company is also making a robot that can actually isolate nucleic acids automatically now they have three channel system and they are increasing it to 12 uh, they are actually uh, augmenting it to 12 channel system they are now actually integrating to pcr as well so that you know the robot can actually do the nucleic acid extraction and that sample will go to the PCR machine and it will do your job. So, these kind of interventions are really important and yes, there are several changes that are coming up in India. Yeah. Wow, so that was awesome. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Balela, for yeah. hearing your experience and uh, what's going on right now because I think it's important to exactly know what's going on right now so that we can plan appropriately for the future. Yeah. Thanks a lot for uh, being with us here today. And on behalf of CSR Tech, we would like to extend a very, you know, uh, thanks to you. And uh, with that, I would like to hand over uh, uh, the uh, event to Dr. Neeraj Mack. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Anshu and uh, Neeraj. So, all the best for the event. I'll be there. Yeah, thank you, Ramji. Thank you. So, our next speaker is uh, Ms. Pooja Gupta. Pooja did uh, her uh, UG from microbiology uh, in, from University of Delhi. Then uh, she joined uh, Cambridge University and uh, she is Gates Cambridge alumnus. She did MPhil from uh, 
Sir Tom Blender Lab in uh, University of Cambridge, and now she is currently a PhD student in York Structure Biology Lab, University of York. And you know, as an undergraduate, Pooja served as editor and editor in chief, and subsequently as the present president of Sukshma Jeev Society. She was actively engaged in organizing number of academic and co-curricular activities funded by the DBT's Star College scheme. So, we thank you, Pooja, for uh, accepting our invitation to speak on this occasion, and we look forward to hear from you. Over to you, Pooja, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Neeraji. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I shall share my screen now. Yeah, yeah. Entire screen. Um, can uh, is my screen shared now? Can you see my slides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, hello to everybody. Uh, I'm Pooja, and my talk. Uh, will be very different from Dr. Ramji's, of course, not just in terms of the content itself, but also the scale, because, of course, Ramji was outlining a vision for, uh, you know, for scientists and students and postdocs and how to fund their research and translation and whatnot. But my talk is going to be very simply about... Um, my journey so far um, and so in in scale as well it's going to be much much smaller but i do hope that those of you who are listening and who are young and are still thinking about what they want to do with their lives would would find um some bits of my story interesting uh, my talk, uh, as you can see, is titled uh, My Incomplete Guide to Becoming a Scientist. And that's because um, this is going to be advice from someone who's still figuring it out. Um, so who am I? Um, as uh, Neeraji said, um, I did my microbiology degree um, from Bhaskara Chara College of Applied Sciences, which is a, a constituent college of the University of Delhi. Um, from uh, 2015 to 2018, and uh, from 2018 onwards to 2019 or to October 2019, um, I was doing an MPhil at the Department of Biochemistry, University of Cambridge, and I um, was on the Gates Cambridge Scholarship um, for the same. And after finishing my MPhil. Uh, at Cambridge, I have um, started a PhD um, in structural biology, and I'm currently on another scholarship. So um, basically, after my um, undergraduate degree, uh, which was at the University of Delhi, and so the, the fees was, um, you know, negligible compared to the kind of um, fees you have to um, pay at private colleges in India or, you know, abroad, say, um, universities abroad. Um, yeah, my undergraduate degree was not very expensive at all compared to that. And it was quality education, which is something that, you know, we take for granted. But the fact that our government institutions um, and universities are able to impart high quality education with limited resources um, really sets up uh, sets us up quite well to compete with people from all over the world because of just just because of how high quality yet affordable um you know these these uh, government institutions uh, are so that is something that should be um recognized and preserved um so so this has been um, a brief introduction to my um academic journey so far and i like to say that my stamp collection has grown over the years and it does if you if you start pursuing higher degrees and you move to different institutions um, you realize that in a short 
period of time you've had multiple affiliations and you've met all kinds of people which is something i will be talking about later so uh, that's that uh, but what am i going to advise you on so essentially i will like i said derive from my own experiences this will be largely anecdotal um however i'd like to believe that the distillation of these experiences will be somewhat insightful um and i think it's very important to say that i this the intention is not to preach i just like to share with you some wisdom uh, that that have found useful over the years uh so i've structured this talk uh, in a way that uh, basically all the anecdotes can be summarized in these key takeaway messages and so before i start talking about the first set of anecdotes i should um tell you what the takeaway message is from these anecdotes and it is that i figured out what i really wanted to do and started working towards it as soon as possible um so i had realized i wanted to become a researcher by the age of 17 which you know i i was very young obviously but i think young people um do have that kind of conviction if they can find it and so it's important to um get to remain open and receptive to to things around you and often you know your career choice it doesn't have to be a very big decision you can just absorb things in your environment and often you just realize oh you know what this is what i want to do and it doesn't have to be a, a very dramatic decision um but because i had by the age of 17 realized i wanted to be a researcher i just then kept myself open to all kinds of possibilities and opportunities that i could um use to make this idea that i had oh i want to be a scientist that's good it's a good idea but then what do you do to um actualize that idea and so i uh, met dr anshu uh, who's on the call at the moment um who was who is well a csir scientist but back then she was um, working for uh, working on the osdd project and i was taking my class 12 board exams when i met her and this is a picture of uh, the, me from the conference where we met and after uh, taking my class 12 board exams i knew that i didn't want to go down the conventional route and take all the medical entrance exams and engineering entrance exams and only because i should uh, because i knew what i wanted to do i was like i'm not going to waste my time taking all these exams just so that i have a seat somewhere in case things don't work out i instead decided to write to her and she was very kind and let me work in her lab for 6 months before i started college so before i started my degree at the university of delhi and based on this this work that i did uh, i was able to publish my first um, paper a, a scientific paper as first thought at the age of 19 um and while i was working with her i became involved in a workshop that she was organizing so again it's about remaining open to things that are happening around you right because i was in her lab um i knew that she was working on this so um it became very easy for me to then insert myself into the you know in the middle of the action and offer my help with whatever um she was trying to do um and because i became involved uh, in in the workshop i met tom and others who are now their friends and this is uh, me and uh, tom um and i'm presenting the work that um i had published um already at that point and this is me and ross uh, who i will talk about later and this is us in um the the right 
So we are in Westminster, which is where the British Parliament is. So he now works as a parliamentary aide. But when I met him, um, he was at the Royal Society of Chemistry. So I've I've kept these friendships going. Um, and so the idea, I think, that I want you all to take away from here is that if you figure out what you want to do early on, you can really get a head start, right? Because when you're that young, uh, people take notice of um, the fact that you have that conviction and you have that motivation. And if you meet people like Dr. Anshu, who are very keen to help and very keen to nurture, then you are in a very good position to uh, make the most of the opportunities that do come your way, because they always do, if you remain receptive and open. The second takeaway message would be um, that I have tried to connect with people and was able to create unique opportunities with them. So after the workshop, um, I accompanied Tom, who um, actually I should have mentioned earlier. So Tom is uh, Professor Tom Blundell. I I call him Tom. Um, he was the professor from Cambridge who was um, the coordinator for the workshop from UK um, because it was an it was a bilateral workshop. Um, and so after the workshop, I accompanied Tom from Chandigarh where so the, the workshop was organized at Imtech in 2016. And I accompanied Tom from Chandigarh to Delhi. And on that um, journey, in the car, we just talked about everything and anything. And towards the end, we just uh, arranged that I would spend the summer of 2017 in his lab in Cambridge. Um, and he agreed to pay for everything as well. And while I was in Cambridge, I reconnected with Ross, who I uh, showed you a picture with uh, on the previous slide, who was then at the Royal Society of Chemistry, but it's now uh, but now works for the British Parliament. Um, now, why Ross is important is because uh, Dr. Anshu, Tom, and Ross uh, wrote letters for me when I applied for the MPhil at the Department of Biochemistry. And because I had met these people and had tried to connect with them as, you know, as people, it's Yes, they had their affiliations and their titles and whatever, but I tried to connect to them as people, as friends. And and that, I think, was reflected in the letters they wrote for me. And I got the position and as a full scholarship, which meant that I could actually go and study at Cambridge because the fees are um, extortionate. They are, they are not very affordable if you don't have a scholarship. Uh, so after I got the position in the scholarship, I went back to the summer of 2017 and met my future PhD supervisor at a barbecue party at the Department um, of Biochemistry. Back then he was a postdoc and I didn't know if he uh, was, and I don't know what he was going to do with his life at that point, but he eventually went on to start his own group uh, at York in uh, later that year. And, and so that, again, was something I had at the back of my mind, that I know him and I know what his research interests are. And I know that he was now going to start his own group. Um, and knowing Jamie personally then allowed us to design a PhD project that was ideal for my interests. And again, just as with Dr. Anshu and Tom and Ross being involved in my application made it better, and made me competitive for a full gate scholarship. Uh, here as well, knowing Jamie and his involvement with my PhD application just made it stronger. A third thing I, I think is very important is that I actively seek the unfamiliar. So, you know, Pseudomonas species, Pseudomonas is a very um, commonly found ubiquitous uh, bacterial genus. And like these bacteria, I'm opportunistic and I don't worry too much about being in different environments with geographical restrictions. This is me dressed as a drug resistant uh, bacterium for Halloween. Um, so why I say that is because I was offered a Ramanujan scholarship for a PhD um, at Cambridge as well. But 
at that point i had started feeling that i uh that came to become too familiar uh so i chose york instead um and while i was in cambridge um and even at york i was determined to not move only in indian circles because you know when you move to a different country it's it isn't easy to strike conversations with people who are very different from you but at the same time i've learned so much about the world from a, a very diverse group of friends um and what's really important here is to recognize that confidence is very very important right and the confidence to befriend people who are different more accomplished it's undeniably a function of privilege if you feel like you have in the past um said things that have made it easier for you to make friends and if you believe that you have the social skills then all of this is very easy but uh, at the same time i'd like to say that if you fear that you wouldn't have anything interesting to say work towards having something interesting to say and then just say it because um uh, the key thing to remember is that many good things begin with a friendship right the best institutions in the world are not faceless nameless machines they're made by people and human connection um is is a very powerful thing so yeah as as cliche as this sounds networking is very important if you have a vision for yourself um obviously talent hard work you if you want to do something you must know how to do it but at the same time you also need to know uh the right um people i know it sounds terrible but the best way to make the most of your skills is to then exhibit them to the right people so that they can then help you develop them even more um and at this point i think i'd like to go back to the the science for a bit because i think in in my head at least the metaphor works really well um and the idea here is that you know if you if you're a human or at the bottom of the screen what you see are protein crystals now humans and protein crystals when exposed to x rays behave very differently humans can either look like that um when exposed to x rays or they can become superheroes or they can die if the dose is too lethal too high uh, however proteins when crystallized diffract um x rays and you can use these diffraction patterns to get atomic models and you can solve structures and actually visualize the shapes of proteins um and the idea is that when you are um proteins in their native state you know you don't know what their you can't really look at their structure when they're inside the bacterium or inside a cell what you need to do is take the protein out of its native environment put it in uh this this chemical concoction um and wait for it to crystallize and it is at this stage that uh, the protein can actually be um, defined structurally the analogy here is that humans are in some ways like proteins in that while you're in a safe comfortable native environment there is no reason for you to actually think about your identity right because everybody you see around you is just like you but when you're taken out of your native environment put in a, a foreign um environment that you don't really uh, that isn't in, that isn't familiar it is then that you become more defined as an individual because you have to think about uh, different aspects of your personality and different aspects of your identity and so seeking the unfamiliar is is a great exercise in just figuring yourself out as a person and this is me working on one of my structures um 
And the last message, I think, is uh, I've always believed that when chosen with care, work can be very fulfilling. Um, and I say this, of course, with, with, again, a degree of privilege, because I grew up in a relatively wealthy household. And only now that I've moved away, I really understand that one needs to pay the rent and buy food. You know, and so jobs must pay well, right? Um, however, I also still believe that work can give you so much more. It can give your life purpose and direction. And this is very important and goes back to the first thing I said about figure out what you want to do with your life and then get on with it. Like start, start working towards what you want to do. And if you believe that what you want to do with your life is not something that just helps you pay the bills, it, you want it to mean more, you know, you want it to help people, you want it to, um, now, I must say this, I'm not someone who does science because I think it can transform lives. I have very selfish reasons for doing science. I just like to figure things out. I just like to study bacteria. That's my reason. I just want to understand. Uh, and I know this isn't as um, wonderful a reason to do it. But yeah, people have different reasons to do science. Uh, and so it can give your life a lot of purpose and direction, which is a wonderful thing to have. Because one does need a guiding philosophy in life. You know? it's, it's, um, it's useful to be anchored to something because it's so easy to feel unanchored. It's so easy to feel like you're drifting away. And I find that the scientific worldview with all its flaws is actually a very decent framework to function within, not just, um, in the professional sphere, but like I demonstrated that little example about proteins crystallizing and humans being like proteins in, in that sense. You know, you can use these ideas from science to make sense of your own reality in your everyday experience. Um, and so my, my message would be to, to young people, uh, Put your heart into whatever you choose to do. You know, it only adds to life. It doesn't take away a thing. Um, and and yeah, that's that's all I had to say. All the very best, and thank you very much for listening. You can ask me anything. Uh, that's my email, and you can also find me on Facebook. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Pooja. Thanks for sharing your amazing scientific journey with us. And you know, I can proudly say that uh, you can be a wonderful role model for uh, young students who are interested in pursuing science. And you know, as um, one of the objective of uh, this science festival also is to build scientific temper among the masses and the young children. So yeah. I. Here, I must uh, thank Dr. Anshu for um, giving your contact and uh, inviting you for this wonderful talk. Thank you, Pooja, once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anshu, you want to say something? No, I think uh, I, I have seen her grow as, as a kid from school to now. Uh, I think what people learn in probably 60 years of their life, uh, she did in six years. So that's pretty amazing. Keep it up, Pooja. Do very well. And I sincerely hope that more, more and more students realize very early on, as Pooja said, what is it you would like to do and start working in that direction with, you know, so much focus, energy and hard work. So, so thank you so much. That's all. All the best, Pooja. Thank you for everything, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Pooja. So Anshu, uh, maybe our next speaker is uh, Dr. Ramesh Soni. Dr. Ramesh, are you there? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So as uh, we have already discussed that the theme of our IISF 
2020 इज आत्मनिर्भर भारताय विश्व कल्याणम च विज्ञानम दैट इज साइंस फॉर सेल्फ रिलायंट इंडिया एंड ग्लोबल वेलफेयर एंड आवर नेक्स्ट मींस डॉक्टर रमेश सोनी इज डूइंग द सेम थिंग ही हैज अप्लाइड हिज साइंस साइंटिफिक नॉलेज फॉर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ प्रोवाइडिंग सॉल्यूशंस फॉर ड्रिंकिंग वाटर एंड he has set up his uh, company vyujal technologies which aims to alleviate the global water shortage crisis through the development and manufacturing of atmospheric water generators and this company is incubated at iit madras research center and is part of water for future initiative initiative so i welcome you dr ramesh and uh, it's all yours maybe you can start please okay uh, thank you uh, dr neeraj uh, just a correction i am not yet doctor okay <laughs> so uh, that's so much of you know it's very good to hear it but uh, i'm yet to i'm i'm far away from that right so uh, and uh, thank you uh, and there sir uh, and you and uh, sanjeev khosla sir for having me here thank you anshu ma'am uh, for me having me here uh, so i'll just turn on the video okay so uh, i listened to uh, my previous speaker uh, ram ji sir and uh, also uh, ms pooja so you know i get this there are we have to different but uh, the way i understand that the purpose of this talk is that i should be talking about how the science can help the up- upcoming generation and uh, so uh, dr ram ji presented how the you know what are the opportunities are available for the upcoming uh, young scientists i would say and uh, 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 anuj uh, pooja is one example such you know ki how uh, provided the opportunity how people can be a fantastic example and you know they can achieve so much so i would uh, kind of talk about my journey so i would uh, like how things progressed in my life and what i what from where do i come from so uh, if so i come from rajasthan uh, it's uh, in a, in a district called hanumangarh and uh, i'm basically from a village uh, so if uh, i'm just saying this story so that if somebody can relate it to me and and if and uh, if even few percentage of the current audience today can relate it and if they can try to follow it that would be you know so great so so i basically come from a village where you know we were taught in hindi medium uh, <clears throat> so uh, i have never spoke about this uh, before uh, there are certain things i'm going to speak because till now the most of the presentations which i had were more on technical or the you know the pitch business pitch or you know, asking for funds but uh, uh, it was nowhere about the journey right <laughs> so i will be talking bit about the uh, you know the journey and the background of my life and and then the later on little bit about the technical parts of uh, how things are working you know going on with me so uh, so i studied uh, in a village till uh, 10th uh, we had in my village a school till 8th class only uh, and we were i was in hindi medium and uh, and uh, so i did my 9th and 10th in a school which was used actually in uh, you know used to had permission to teach till 8th uh, because of some medical conditions so after completing 10th uh, uh, as uh pooja said uh, the kind of friendship you choose uh, affects you a lot so basically my family was trying to put me in a job after completing my 10th because i did not score very good i only scored 56% in my 10th uh, so they were like you will put you in a job and uh, you'll get some money and that's how the trend in villages are uh, but i so there was somebody in my family he was a teacher and uh, you know teacher always does a very good job uh, uh, there are some teachers who literally transforms your life uh, so uh, again uh, there is one example here 
so the, this person uh, tells me that you know uh, tells my family don't put him into the this business line just let him study more so i always used to be fascinated by you know when you study in 10th you always uh, imagine ki had i been in a good school i would get to play with these uh, burets i would get to play with this uh, glass uh, you know the in chemistry lab or physics lab somehow uh, after, because of his teachers recommendations i got into a school in rajasthan uh, in state called district called sikar so i i studied there for two years in my 11th and 12th in peace i studied physics chemistry math and then uh, for a year i was in kota uh, so i did not really had an idea about iits uh, till i was 10th or i didn't had much idea about how many iits are there in india uh, till i was 12th by the time i was completing my uh, 11th sorry uh, but when i came to kota uh, you know ki in, and by end of 12th you get some pictures ki you know what is going on in your life uh, you just came out of your li- little sphere and then you know, things are you know uh, opportunities are vast uh, people are doing so good uh, people are there are so many examples in front of you so i came to kota with this aspiration that i would be getting into an iit and uh, you know uh, make good something good out of my life uh, however uh, there is one thing which i heard while spending you know this this is the only output which i would say that, that i had from one year of my life at kota that there was a teacher again who said this ki uh, nanotechnology or the micro technology are going to be the next industrial revolution something like the it revolution happened uh, the nanotechnology is going to be the next big thing and uh, and that moment i stopped thinking about iits because uh, there are no iits which is actually offers you a, a professional degree in nanotechnology so i got into asaram uh, this is college here so in chennai uh, i'm i'm in chennai right now uh, so there i uh, so they offer th- at that time there were only two universities amiti university in noida and asaram university here Uh, they were offering btech in nanotechnology and uh, so hence i became the i i came to chennai i joined uh, asaram and uh, now th- this is again some challenges right ki uh, so i was completely from hindi medium and uh, being chennai uh, things are very different here uh, all the people were uh, from very good uh, you know uh, the cbse background or so relatively in my class there were only three people who knew hindi uh, who were who were from the uh, state board somehow uh, things went well and uh, again i was in good company with uh, of friends who who had some aspiration and uh, uh, we formed a kind of group we wanted to make ki chalo we'll talk about nanotechnology we'll form a group and we'll we'll make a stage where anybody can come and talk about anything uh, of their interest if somebody wants to talk about ancient science they can talk if somebody wants to talk about nanotechnology they can talk about it so somehow uh, we got a, i got into a good uh, company of people and uh, i started doing internships uh, on my third semester onwards so i did my internship at iic iisr bhopal uh, iic and iit madras and the time i got got into iit madras uh, i never left iit madras after that uh, so i completed my nanotechnology so also the reason i joined nanotechnology was that again a big industrial revolution and we will be getting a lot of money if we become a part of that however that did not happen there are no companies which were actually offer a core job uh, to the uh, nanotechnology graduates because of the curriculums are such that uh, these are research oriented curriculum so you are not completely uh, a researcher by end of uh, your bachelor like you are not a professional or also also not a professional so you had an only one choice either you go to it companies or uh, you go to a uh, research line so i continued with the research line and uh, i joined profit pradeep here uh, and uh, after that uh, i continued with that so the first project which i was uh, so since and after that my journey with uh, what i began so i will share my presentation now and uh, okay so uh, this should come uh, okay so okay so if you see right uh, so 
when I was doing my internships, I worked in different different areas: uh, theoretical physics, uh, mechanical engineering, environmental engineering, uh, uh, you know, condensed matter physics, uh, and eventually when uh, when I started with Project Pradeep, uh, the project of water was given to me that can we make a solution where people in flooded area can get drinkable water. So that was the problem statement which I had in my hand and I started my, uh, the current life, the life I'm living right now. So if you see this picture, uh, this is the Indian, Indian scenario and uh, similar is the global scenario. We don't have water to drink some picture. So this is actually picture of me in back in uh, a few years back. So this is my village and uh, that's how we get water. And now, uh, so this current, the scenario after two years is that this is not available now. You have to get water by tankers. So by getting water by tankers is a common scenario in cities. Like let's say in Chennai, it's very common. But getting water by tanker in village, it's, it's not a normal scenario. And when you live that kind of scenario, you're bound to think that, uh, you know, what kind of future are we going to have if we do not become water conscious individual? So, 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 you know, this is one trigger. I would not say that this is, you know, the only trigger which I work with water. I have other triggers to work with water, but this is one reason that keeps me in connected with water. So right now, uh, my family gets water because of tanker, uh, you know, using tankers and it's similar is the case for many families in my village. So we, so as I told, I began my task with uh, making a solution which can give you drinking water in flood prone area. So uh, we try to, you know, come up with something which were available in the lab and also add something. So this is one a picture of me and one of my teammates here. So we presented a solution which can give you drinkable water using materials and membrane. So this, if you see, this, this is a bottle cap here and this bottle uses four steps of filtration. Uh, so you can put, take water from anywhere and filter it and what comes out is, uh, so you have the membranes which will give you bacteria and viral free water. Uh, so we, uh, and then you have the materials which will again give you, which will take care of the chemical contaminants and what you get is a drinkable water. And then we had something more, which is, uh, so the another problem which I worked on was that, in again in rural areas, uh, as, as you showed, you know, people carry water and most of the time it's it's the children and the, and the uh, women in our house, uh, our sisters or our mothers and sometimes the, uh, the male uh, also. But so in this practice of carrying water, you end up spending a lot of time. And uh, uh, since being a water conscious person, I can say that the water which you get is not drinkable water in ma majority of the cases. But at village level, uh, or the, the majority of people who live in the, you know, at the base of the pyramid, they are not much conscious about the water. They will just filter that water and drink it. So this was a system where you can fill water in a drum and roll it. So you don't need to put that 20 liters of water over your head and carry it to your house. Uh, in spite of that, you can put this water in your drum, roll it, and while you're rolling it, you have put a concussion of biological stuff. Uh, so this is what we use here. So normally we, we use silver nanomaterials uh, as in uh, disinfectant. Uh, but what we used here was uh, research was done in the lab and we tried to, you know, we put in this uh, product form. Uh, so it was a mixture of carbonate with silver nanoparticles. So if you put that kind of mixture, uh, the biocidal activity increases by thousandfold. So what you expect in 24 hours, you can get the same thing in 20 minutes. So by the time you reach your home and you had a biological contaminated water, you will get clean drinking water. And so we had the system, so this system is designed. Uh, so this is first uh, prototype and we are making right now, uh, we are, you know, we are doing, making more prototypes. And so 
for this we formed a company uh, to take this to market which is called xyz innovations private limited uh, so that that this is that story uh, so this is again a, a scenario in chennai uh, chennai literally does not have water in, in in spite of being a city on in coastal area uh, the drinking water is not available uh, due to several reasons because the surface water is not there or it has been contaminated the ground water has become saline or it's because of the you know because the it's it, because of its vicinity to the that the coastal area so eventually you do not have drinking water so we uh, in 2016 when we were working uh, uh, we had this uh, or i would rather say professor pradeep had this idea this ki can we get this water from atmosphere uh, we have this you know when in morning when you wake up we have so much of water you know we, we see the small drops on the leaves uh, and can we do this so we did some research uh, we found so we started this work on atmospheric water generators in 2016 and uh, since then we did uh, many experiments we used to do experiments in night uh, so uh, because humidity is high in the night and the temperature is cold so that the climate is uh, very uh, much suitable to collect water from air uh, so and uh, the reason of doing this was that you have air and mostly air has humidity in different sometimes it's low uh, somewhere it's high but air with humidity is everywhere available it's globally available and uh, uh, it's a renewable source and uh, uh, no matter how much humidity you take it out from this uh, every time the humidity comes back to atmosphere and uh, you, all, you you know we almost have around uh, 1.4 million 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 liters of water available in this atmosphere so it's it's an actually another renewable water source for us so we started what uh, work we used to do experiments in night time in 2 am to 5 pm or 2 am to 6 am because that's the naturally uh, cold time uh, which has high humidity less temperature and we used to see how the uh, the surface is different surfaces which we used to prepare are functioning so uh, so we came up with some surface which has uh, yeah so we so you know this is one paper which which was published and uh, so the basic idea is that uh there are so many animal species and plant species which lives their life completely by collecting water from atmosphere so these are few animals plant species and uh, one animal species right uh, so this is stenogara beetle uh, he lives his whole life in desert by collecting his own water uh, you can see the picture right uh, uh, this will in stand 45 degree and uh, his the wings that will collect water water will roll to his mouth he'll drink he'll live his life similarly you have the cacti plant it has got this uh, conical structure and uh, this conical structures gives you some uh, laplace pressure gradient and and the water comes towards and also this cones which are available they provide nucleation points for water condensing and uh, so this was a paper where uh, the both the the biomimetic you know the phenomena or the motivation uh, was combined and put it on a uh, like you had a conical surface and on top of that you can do the hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity engineering and get a very good structure so in, like this motiv- motivated by this we started uh, making it atmospheric water generator we had a surface which followed a cacti uh, philosophy and uh, we do this kind of uh, we made products and this is the how those you know can you collect you filter the air you collect water from that uh, filtered air and then you process it and then add minerals and give it for drinking so we we come in picture there we we do the micro nano engineering of the surface and uh, this is the whole uh, internal component which which happens in you know the the life of atmospheric water generators so this is uh, i will try to play this video if i can play okay so this is uh, one experiment which you can see so mm, as uh, you see uh, the drops are forming and then they disappear so on, so this is a mess which has uh, this conical structure with hydrophobic and hydrophilic coatings and then so these they the serve as nucleating points and uh, the water water gets condensed on it and then slowly 
once the drop becomes to some size, uh, it, it gets absorbed on the hydrophilic pad, which is collected on the back side, and then the water gets dropped in the collection tray. So, so this was the philosophy which we used, and then uh, this is uh, this way we got the water. Uh, just a minute, so okay, yeah. So we, these are the few products which we're having, and uh, we presented this to a prime minister when he visited here. Uh, so this is our factory, uh, which we have started, and uh, we have made a, a different version of, uh, or you know, using different versions of our product. We have supplied till now around one lakh fifty thousand liters of drinking water, and, uh, uh, and 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 this this project is going on. We uh, we we are, we are, we have we have reached uh, different cities in India now. We have reached Goa. We have reached Mumbai. We have reached Ahmedabad. We have reached Chen Delhi, and we were we are definitely operating in Chennai. Uh, so this was uh, a, a glance of my journey. Yeah. So this is just a uh, uh, this is picture I have kept here because this is uh, what I want to do really. Uh, you know, this is uh, as I would say this is this is what I really want. Uh, so you do atmospheric water generator, and you can do this by Collecting, uh, you know, by spending electricity, right? So what we are doing is we take electricity to do this condensation. But if we can make a material, uh, and 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 which has this capacity to absorb water, right? So this is the problem which I have. This is the problem I'm posing to everybody. Uh, so we have so much of you know different varieties of materials available with us, right? And uh, there are materials which captures. Humidity, like you know, you in home we have salt, the salt which we add to our food. You keep it outside; it will capture humidity, and, uh, and 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 you heat it; it will release that humidity. So, I want similar kind of material only, but with high capacity to hold the water content and release it soon. So, so I'm looking at some. I, my desire is to, or you know, my purpose. Or the end goal of starting this company is that if we can have a material which can capture humidity without spending any electricity, and then release it back the moment you expose it to sun, and if we can do so, right? So this is how it would look like. You put it at night, it captures the humidity, becomes bigger, it swells, and when you expose it to sun, it start giving you water out. So this is. Uh, what uh, my vision is, and till the time we reach this, uh, so you know we do our R and D in IIT Madras. We have been we are still working with Professor Pradeep, and uh, we are very thankful to him. And and so this is my journey using uh, biofuel technologies. And uh, uh, and and the I mean you know the benefit of doing this is that uh, you get to solve a big challenge of this whole world, right? Uh, now everybody is talking about water. If you see even the politicians, or you know the whole every community which you find on this earth, you know, or, or the in the community which are very impactful. If you talk about the politics, or or the industrialist, or the R and D, or the academicians, these all communities are talking about water. How to get water for future? And if if a one individual or a one group of people uh, can do the work. Or can get this kind of solution, uh, it would be a great help to to the whole society, to the whole world, and it would be immense satisfaction. And uh, with that, I would stop. And uh, so uh, you can, uh, yeah. So with that, I would stop, and I can be reached at uh, so just on Vyugel page. You can ping me, or uh, you can ping me uh, on Facebook, and. Uh, that's it uh, thank you so much for the opportunity and i hope uh, my time was helpful to uh, my listeners thank you so much hats off to you ramesh and uh, uh, you know we appreciate your efforts for providing solution for water shortage problem of india and uh, i would like to add here that uh, this is you know united nations have set up their 17 agendas for uh, sustainable development goals and 
water is one of their main agenda sixth agenda i think am i yeah. correct no. uh, sir yeah so sir i showed that picture because if you look at the 17 agendas yeah. 16 agenda out of them are related to water if you talk about women safety or the women empowerment give them good water they will be empowered yeah hygiene give them good water you will take care of hygiene and definitely water energy uh, energy sector is taking a lot of water right now so so there are 16 out of the 17 sdg which are indirectly related to water so so right. let's say water is like key to solving the problem of world good so maybe uh, now i would request dr sanjeev khosla to say few words yeah um uh, it was really inspiring listening to the three speakers today uh, uh i must really congratulate uh, them in their journeys and uh, uh, i i can see a uh, uh, lot of a uh, lot of science being done around india and abroad by our young scientists and i'm i'm really really proud uh, uh, uh proud of the achievements that they have made uh, uh yes we talk about uh, uh, doing science for the benefit of the society as puja mentioned uh but what puja also mentioned was that uh, uh, and i fully agree with her is that the most important thing about being in science is asking question and trying to find what that answer is and i think so that makes all the difference uh, i think so if you run behind science everything everyone runs behind you so i think so uh, this is this is a lesson i think so we need to take it to to the general masses the society in general uh, no matter what the scientific way of life is better than any any way you want to live in so i think so uh, it's important and uh, uh, all the three guests have actually uh, made us learn a lot of new things uh, must again congratulate them uh, it's really really inspiring uh, to hear uh, them uh, tell us about their stories and i think so it was really inspiring i i don't have any more words uh, thank you very much and i'll give it back to neeraj to uh, conclude the session now yeah. thank you sir please stay with us don't turn off your camera puja are you there i am yes i'm turning my camera on as well yes. i'm here <laughs> we'd like to have a snap of photo we would like to take photo So now Anshu I think uh, maybe you can propose a word of thanks Yeah I I think uh, Dr Sanjeev did a very uh, very good concluding uh, session in terms of recognizing what each one of the speaker really taught us today uh, I think my word of thanks would begin uh, by thanking our awesome speakers and in context of self reliance uh, Dr Ramji told us about how we can do innovation in policy and strategy in terms of puja what we can do in context of basic science and of course putting all that together uh, ramesh told us how you can really you know take all of that together to address a global issue so i think what drives them is passion that's a that's the common theme with all all three of uh, the speakers who we heard today and uh, thanks to all of you for uh, accepting our invitation and for being here with us and uh, for this to happen i must really uh, put on record and thank dr neeraj who is uh, basically the coordinator of isf uh, curtain raiser at india uh, like at csr in tech and along with him the team this is sachin rawat bhupinder singh shekhar and the it team they all have uh, you know uh, we really did uh, a sprint here because we've had a very little time and i must uh, thank all the speakers to help us get this done Uh, at the end i would like to uh, really thank uh, dr sanjeev khosla because uh, with our uh, 
uh, because of the pandemic we often meet online and not so much in person but uh, his vision in terms of pushing us to science and scientific excellence and the freedom to think about doing good science and how do we can make a difference is something that allows us to do these events and uh, to listen and learn from the experiences of others so with that i would really like to uh, thank him he is actually the host of the event we should be thanking him actually but yeah just to tell that you know it's it's a uh, it's a lot reassuring when you know that you are led by somebody who shares the vision and passion to make all of us self reliant in that context and in the end i would really like to uh, thank the isf uh, coordination team who thought about this idea uh, many many years ago and if puja remembers we were at the first isf event presenting all our lab posters there so we started uh, so we have been engaged with all isf events so far so that's one thing because it actually gives you the opportunity to talk to people who you ne normally never meet in a day to day context so it's a platform that allows you to interface with the wider community so with that i would like to uh, tell you that all the listeners to of this curtain raiser we have curtain raiser number 2 coming on monday at 3 o'clock we will be launching the teaser of our antimicrobial resistance video game and please learn come and play so sikho sikhao aur hame batao ki hum aur acha kya kar sakte hain and with that i would like to close the session thank you namaste Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for having me. Maybe you can spread the word about IISF also. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.